I would say the one thing that creatives struggle to learn when first starting out in this field is how to receive negative feedback. Positive feedback is easy. Great, wonderful, bravo, that's lit, hands down my favorite, you're the best. These comments seem empty at first, but it's these type of comments that we seek out in the first place when we post our work. Feedback like this offers us validation for our hard work and study. This validation leads to more learning and exploration and hopefully the res better results and improved work. But we cannot expect 100% positive feedback all the time. It can lead to overconfidence, arrogance, and we never really know exactly what we need to study next to improve ourselves. On the other hand, overly negative feedback can absolutely destroy a new student's confidence and discourage them from pursuing their passions altogether. Negative feedback can come from teachers, fellow colleagues, students, or clients, and knowing how to deal with overly negative feedback can help you stay your course and remain professional at all times. Creatives wear their heart on their sleeve. When an accountant is wrong, well, they're wrong. Numbers only add up in specific ways and there are formulas that they need to follow. As a creative, a lot of our work is subjective, meaning it depends on the viewer and their situation how it is interpreted. That means someone can rip the work you once thought was destined for greatness. You take this personally. And not only is that person critiquing the work, they're critiquing your very heart, your soul, your being. You can easily see why creatives struggle every day with receiving negative feedback. Here are some examples of negative feedback that can not just ruin a creative's day, but can prevent them from continuing to strive for better results. Unfortunately, these examples are modeled off real-world examples seen on social media comments. This looks like word art. My five-year-old can do better than this. This post is a waste of my time. Your content sucks. Please stop trying. This made me laugh so bad. What do all these overly negative comments have in common? They never really list a why or list ways for a person to improve their work. In fact, these are not critiques at all. Just slander, in my opinion. That means they no longer need to be taken seriously. Without giving a reason, they are just hate mongers and attention seekers and have issues with their own self-confidence. To correctly critique a creative work is to take the time to analyze the work and then provide specific steps for improvement. If there is no improvement they can make, which is rare, then list a reason why they think it's good. For it to be a proper critique, they must answer two questions. The first one is why. Why is it bad? Why is it good? You must also follow up with the question, how? How can this work be improved? What are some actionable steps that we can evaluate that will elevate the design and meet its goal and be effective? For example, to critique badly done photo edits, you can critique it by first properly reviewing the design. Ask yourself, will it properly be seen by its intended audience? If so, how will it be received? Analyze its use of basic design theory foundations like balance, hierarchy, color, theme, and repetition. If it breaks these rules, then does it break it intentionally and with purpose to drive a reaction from the viewer? Lastly, what is the goal of the design? And is it meeting that goal? Once you analyze the design, you are now ready to answer two questions of why and how. Let's review the why. While we answer the why, we are also giving advice on how to make it better. Based on design foundations and theory, it lacks proper contrast. Nothing is standing out as a focal point. The most important thing is the 50% off of the sale. Making that a color that contrasts well against the purple might work best. Maybe a complement color, like a warm color. A similar font weight is being used by all typography elements. Once again, there is a loss of contrast through the design and nothing seems to stand out as important. Making at least one of the typography elements bold or italic can help add differentiation. In terms of appealing to human emotions, I personally find the woman off-putting with an almost unhappy gaze. When shopping for a sale, I get this elated feeling. Perhaps finding a different photo could help change the tone for the better. This is a pretty good critique. They took the time to list the reasons why they thought it could use some improvement, but also offered some action items to the designer so they can follow up and improve on these issues. 
But there is just one thing missing from this critique, encouragement. How well do people take step-by-step -step critiques and advice depends on their openness when reading it. Starting off with a long laundry list of improvements could make them wonder if there was any redeeming qualities at all to their design and if they should have just not even bothered. Encouragement is everything. I almost always lead with something positive before launching into feedback and critique. It could even be that you're just glad they are trying something out and appreciate their effort in trying to get better. Most of the time you can find at least one redeeming quality or positive to focus on. We have all talked about how to write a great critique, but what about receiving one? First of all, when reviewing a properly done critique, we must think of several things. And number one, you are learning and growing and almost everyone has something they can improve upon. After 20 years of graphic design, I still make mistakes. After creating a design, I may go back just one week later and make vital tweaks that can change it for the better. No amount of training will make you perfect. That naturally leads to the second thing. Being humble is a skill. Humility is present with some of the most respected authors, painters, and creators of our day. Humility leads us to always want to learn more because we're never masters but just masters in training. Humility can be hard in some countries where being the best is favored over being humble. My country, the United States, for example, is very much an exhibitionist type country where your net worth and how many followers you have is seen as an important status symbol. Number three, people are not always mature in the way they handle their emotions. People get angry, violent, they may not always have had positive instances in their life to look upon. They may struggle with mental health issues, and they may be grieving the loss of a loved one. We never know what people are going through. They can easily take this out on you when you post your project. Make it a practice to only take seriously those who properly answered questions of why and how when giving feedback. And you can tell they took the time to give you a proper critique. Everything else, especially hate, it's just noise. Number four, never be afraid to post your work or send it to a client. Being a little nervous is healthy, but being afraid is not. Never fear negative critiques. Be open to how they can make your work better. Above all else, be professional in your response. I could write a lesson on just this point alone. How we respond to negative feedback is critical. Always take an hour sometimes even a day break before responding to a comment or client email that got you a little bit angry or sad inside. Being professional and taking the high road, especially with client work, is a sign that you're mature and ready to take on more complex projects, tasks, and even manage others. I can tell you the story of how I emailed back a client in haste after receiving a lackluster response from my new brand design. I spent 10 hours coming up with just one concept and I thought it was strong and well suited for the company. I expected a few praises and maybe a few exclamation marks with the words, wow. What I got was almost nothing. I got, this looks nice, but not really feeling it. Let's explore other options. What other options? I explained in my head. I started to write back the client in a fast pace. Dear client, this is my best option. I've spent time curating what I think is the direction I think this company needs to go in. I believe my concept deserves another look. Asking the client to take another look at a concept is not a bad idea, but the curt and quick manner in which I almost demanded a second look is not professional, and it could have lost me the job. Thank goodness I never sent it. I went and got a cup of coffee, talked to my partner, and decided to meet with them again to discuss different direction. In the end, that client pushed me to create something I was really proud of and that made them happy. It did use some elements from the design that they did not like, but incorporated entirely new ones I would have not considered before unless I was humble enough and allowed my client to have some feedback and some back and forth conversation with me about it. With over 300,000 students over the last few years, I've had some time in the public eye. I get messages often with some pretty negative critiques. I once received one about how my Facebook group cover photo looked immature for someone who had so many students and they were disappointed in it. 
I have to say I was not professional in my response that day, and I replied with a very sarcastic short message. They were a bit shocked and wanted to know why I responded to it so unprofessionally. A day later, I was totally mortified. I could have handled that a lot better. I let my first response and emotions take over. Time always helps when responding to negative feedback, especially when we take it personally at first. Remember, we are all part of a greater business process, whether we're selling our art, working with clients, or working at a company. There is time to be personal, and there's time to understand that what we do is part of business. It's hard for a creative to separate their passions from their business, but it's something we all must do at times to be able to be open to professional responses, move forward, and have feedback. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on receiving and giving feedback. I have a rather large student Facebook group, and in this group, some people have faced unnecessary and improper critiques and feedback. The good news is most of the interactions have been incredibly rewarding, valuable, helpful, and encouraging. In a lot of design degree curriculum, giving critiques is part of the program. In a lot of design degree curriculum, giving and receiving feedback is part of the program. I wanted you guys to understand the basics of positive, constructive critiques so you can help others, but also help yourself to be more open to improvement and growth without ever feeling inadequate.